And I can bring 10,000 witnesses to say what we have been doing there through the years, bringing Europeans to the United States and the relationships with European universities to our advantage, to Miami's advantage, and to the advantage of the faculty and the students. I consider our students at Munich and Luxembourg ambassadors to the United States in Europe. I was born in Luxembourg, came to the United States as an immigrant with my father. My mother had died and we settled in Akron, Ohio. I went to school in Akron, grade school, high school. Incidentally, I couldn't speak a word of English, so they put me in kindergarten. And when you're 12 years old, and you're in kindergarten, that's a novel experience. Nobody picked on me. I was the biggest boy in class. Then, of course, I won a scholarship as a student to Miami University and I had a wonderful opportunity to get a great education. Eventually, after World War II, four years in the Army, a period of working for Procter & Gamble before and after the war, I finally ended up where I was to make my career, and that is to be the first alumni director of Miami University. At the time, I started to work for Miami. We were not very um, internationally uh, organized. Um, I used to make jokes and say, uh, a lot of people living around this part of Oxford think that the world came to an end at the Ohio River. When uh, Dr. Ray Wilson became the uh, provost of Miami University, he stimulated an interest in international studies. But he also got the idea that our students should have a, an international relationship. One of his classmates, class of 1926, Miami, was a Dr. Koichi Hasegawa, who was a history professor in, in Tokyo. And Dr. Wilson, Dr. Hasegawa made a deal and Miami students could go to Japan, Japanese students could come to Oxford and Miami University. But on his way home, Dr. Hasegawa had a heart attack and died, so that their plans really did not materialize. Ray Wilson came to me. I was the development officer, and he said, where else can we go? to set up an international exchange. And I said, Luxembourg. There's no university in Luxembourg. And we would be the first, and I think we'd be very welcome. Introducing new subjects in an academic community is usually rather difficult. There were some of the teachers who felt that, uh, let's say in a German department, uh, the Luxembourgers don't like the Germans. They've been run over during World War I and World II, occupied by Nazi Germany. And then maybe German wasn't very popular in Luxembourg, so maybe that wouldn't be a good place for our students to learn German. French department said they don't speak a proper French in Luxembourg, and that isn't going to be incorporated to our students. I laugh when I say, kiddingly, the geography department couldn't find Luxembourg on the map, so they weren't particularly in favor. Dr. Shriver appointed a committee, and my wife Winnie and I went to Luxembourg, and we found them very receptive. Anyhow, the outcome of it all was that we tried it out, and in 1968, we had, uh, after having a tour of alumni visit Luxembourg, including members of the Board of Trustees, and the approval of Dr. John Mallet, who was a former president of Miami and who was now the Chancellor of the Board of Regents, 
and Governor Jim Rhodes of Ohio were all enthousi enthusiastic about the program. And this is how it started. By 1968, we were ready to start our first course. When we began our courses was to teach subjects in um, Miami University in Luxembourg that applied to the European environment, like European history, European government, banking, finance, to learn about actually European customs, European culture, knowing, of course, that once they got to the center, they would want to travel all over Europe. One of the positive aspects of our European experience in Luxembourg is that the students live in private homes. Almost every family in Luxembourg speaks French and German fluently. There are also Portuguese families and a lot of Italian families who are workers in the Luxembourg economy. So the students can have a choice of living with a family that predominantly speaks the language they want to um, study and learn to use. A number of our students live in Europe or in other countries abroad because they got the stimulation by living over there for a semester or a year, which prompted them uh, to share in that international relationship and to settle in a foreign countries. So it changes their views and it changes uh, their broad understanding of people in other, on another continent in other parts of the world. The whole pattern just fitted perfectly uh, to be able to apply my background and what I had learned in the United States to working with an academic institution of Miami quality, establishing the center. But in a while, I think everybody who experienced Luxembourg as a tourist, a visitor, or a visiting professor is now agreed that it was a pretty good move, at least uh, for the small part I played in it. Uh, it was one of my greatest achievements. I would give most anything to have the opportunity to be there for the 45th anniversary. My wife Winnie and I, before her death, managed to get to Luxembourg more times than I can remember, but we never missed a convocation celebrating anniversaries starting with the 5th, the 10th, and all through the years. And I will be thinking of all of the events going on that I lacked the opportunity uh, to participate in. I miss my homeland very much. I'm a proud American, but I owe everything to my birthright and to my background in the Grand Duchy. So from that standpoint, uh, my hopes and prayers and all good wishes go to my friends and colleagues, and particularly to the Miami students and the Miami staff and faculty members who are preserving our tradition with special salutes to people like uh, Ambassador Gita Musa, who is teaching at the center, and of course, Emil Hogg, who goes down in the history of all of our students as one of the many great teachers uh, who are, have been teaching our boys, our young men and women from Miami uh, in the Grand Duchy. And of course, to the officials of the government with whom I've had opportunities to continue email and mail relationships and who are part of my friendly circle. So for all of them I say, vive Luxembourg, vive America, and vive the Miami University Center. <laughs>